Hello, welcome to another episode of Knitting Up North with Jen and Karina. I'm Jen. I'm Karina. And today is Saturday, April 6th, and this is episode number three. So we're super happy to be back with everybody, and we have had a, a busy couple of weeks, um, lots in the mix, and we're going to add a new segment today about what we've been up to uh, so that y'all can get to know us better and just kind of get an idea of what we do in between podcasting. But before we go there, uh, you can find me on Instagram as Jen Loves Yarn. I am Jen from Northern Minnesota, where I live with my husband and my stepson. I'm a knitter, spinner, crocheter, and uh, I think you'll see a little bit of all of that today. Mm -hmm. And you can find me on Instagram as Karina is Crafty. That's also Ravelry, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I am a knitter, crocheter, and a sewist from Bemidji, Minnesota, where I live with my husband and our children. Love it. And we'd also love it if you would like, subscribe, do all the things at Knitting Up North with Jen and Karina. Mm -hmm. So with that, what are you wearing? Um, I am wearing Ian. Beautiful. Ian um, by November Knits. Um, I cast this on uh, Sweater Camp. Yeah. I was knitting it for Sweater Camp. And so I uh, just finished. It's also um, one of my um, finished objects. Mm. So good. So, yeah. We can... You know what I would say about this one? So like the neck is perfect. And I, when I walked in today, I was like, this sweater fits you perfectly. The length, the arms, the neck, the whole thing. We'll put a picture in so that everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. But it is such a beautiful fit. Thank you. I'm really happy with outfits too. When I finished it last night, so that I had to, I just about ran out of yarn. And so I um, ended up, the first sleeve, I ended up well, when I got to the second sleeve, I got scared. I didn't want to play yarn chicken, so I just stopped and then finished the, finished the cuff. And then I went back and stuck the needles in in the same spot that I stuck the cuff started the cuff on the second sleeve. Yeah, and ripped back and then just did the cuff. And so you can see they're a little, you know, they're a three quarter, kind of a three quarter, unless my arms are down. Like it, yeah. Um, but that's perfect for me because I I think my hands are in the sink all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, kids at home and uh, all the things. I'm always uh, washing my hands or washing a dish. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's nice that, um, you know, this is perfect for that. Yeah, it's kind of like a cross between a three-quarter length and a bracelet sleeve. It's, it's a good active length. Yeah, I'm glad it turned so. out. I, yeah. So when I blocked last night and I, I um, put it on the mat... Before I blocked, I was looking at it and I was like, oh, I know. maybe it might be a little small. And um, and I was like, it, it, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And uh, when I got it on the, um, I, I think I put it on the mat, what, what like seven? Eight, I was going to say, I saw your snap after dinner. So it had to be. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was, I don't know if that's what I'm saying. I might, I told my husband, I'm not sure I'm going to uh, be able to wear that tomorrow. I might still, or I'll take the hairdryer to it and in the morning and when I got up this morning I touched it I'm like oh my gosh it's dry did you have a fan on it or anything no I no? think it's just we have really dry air right now that is true so we have like a fire danger ask my skin yeah oh mine <laughs> too so yep bad. yep <clears throat> love it and um remind us the yarn that is um yeah so when we go to uh finish objects we all I'll have covered this um the yarn is uh Molly Klein Designs um Sweet Tea Yarns and the colorway is a walk to remember and right now it's, she doesn't have any, I don't think, um, on her page, but that is the color. So I am sure she would dye you some. She told me if I needed more that she'd dye it up for me. So if you are in love with this, um, which I am, you can hit her up and say, hey, I want some of that. She'd be really happy. She is super accommodating. Yes, very. All right. Well, I am wearing the Easy Fold Poncho by um, Church Mouse, um, what? Church Mouse Yarns? Or Church Mouse? Hmm, can't remember. Church Mouse, nonetheless. I don't, there's more to that, but I can't remember what it out, what it is. I feel like there's tea in there. We'll put it on the screen or something, or in the show notes. Um, but Easy Folded Poncho, it's got, you know, kind of like a, it's, it's hard really, to see because it's so dark. It's, but. I know, it's dark, but, and, and you know, we, we are actually coordinating here. Oh, mm -hmm. there you go. That's a good one. Like yeah. better light, but... Yeah. Nice, like slouchy, folded. We'll put a picture in too. Um, this is Malabrigo Worsted um, in the colorway Uva. 
UVA. And I knit this a long time ago. I, this is probably a 10 year old FO, mm. but I get plenty of wear out of it, especially this time of year. It's a little hard to wear when it's the dead of winter because, you know, a poncho isn't easy to mm -hmm. put in a coat or mm -hmm. anything right. like that. But when you just need a little something, it is, um, it's a nice layer for sure. So yeah, well, that is what we're wearing. And um, we just want to cover, cover a couple of quick administrative updates. So um, we have our winner from, <laughs> from episode one um, did not reach out to us. And so we drew a new winner last night from the episode one comments. And um, the winner is at Andrea Gray 8689 from Arkansas. So at Andrea Gray 8689. She is from Arkansas. Andrea, if you're watching, please shoot us an email. The email is in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. We just need your uh, shipping address and we can get this in the mail. Um, and I think what we'll do, if we can't, if we can't give it away this time, uh, we have some other things we're going to give away today in support of some designers and new pattern releases. So um, we'll, we'll give it away. And if we don't hear from that person, We'll stick it in one of the other prizes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so Andrea, if you're out there and you're watching, uh, get a hold of us so we can get that out to you. Again, thank you so much for all of the great comments. And you know what? I know we keep saying this, but um, we thought the first episode, like, oh, we got a ton of comments because we're giving something away. Um, and then episode two came along and we didn't give anything away. We still got a ton of comments. I know. And it has been so fun. I love those comments. If you're feeling a little funky you know a little, little down <laughs> just just go read the comments and then you're like oh everybody's so nice so nice and just um just sharing like we love to hear what's on your needles your hook what you're doing um i actually have a whip uh, that it, not one i brought today but it'll probably be an echo next time if i showed all my whips we'd be here for mm -hmm two days. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, but uh, that was that whip was influenced by somebody in the comments. So it's just been so fun um, to interact with everybody from all over the world. So keep those comments coming, mm -hmm. whether we're doing giveaways or not. Like we love to hear yeah. all about what, what you're doing, making, where you're from, your adventures. So uh, do share. I think the other thing we wanted to share as part of an administrative update, and this is really a teaser. This is not um, a full update, but we are going to host our first knit along in the July timeframe. And it is gonna be called Christmas in July. And really the, um, what's behind this is, yeah, I know you guys have seen it too, like there's so many dyers that are releasing all of their advents for 2024 and everybody is getting in on those or, or looking at or trying to decide what they're gonna get um, or making up their own. Either way you go, uh, advent in uh, December is something I know Karina and I both really look forward mm -hmm. to. And um, we have a few picked out already that um, we are probably gonna pull the trigger on. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, so the goal for the um, Knit Along in July is to really just take advents that we have not used yet, or an advent, let's not get too ambitious, but <laughs> an advent that we haven't yet used, or if you don't have an advent laying around, any mini skeins or scraps will do mm -hmm. um, as long as we're all just knitting an advent piece together of some sort. So more details to come, more hashtags to come. Uh, we're going to be pretty loose with the rules. Mm -hmm. um, just yeah, because... if, you, if you, like for me, um, I was trying really hard uh, last Christmas to um, use my advents and knit on them every day. And I did really good until I decided that I needed to finish the sweater for my husband for Christmas. That's like impossible to buy him a present. Yes. Um, and so I was like, the best, I'll finish the sweater I started for him a year, probably earlier. And when I did that and I really wanted to get it done, um, I, I then the advents got stuck aside. So I have right now I have two um, uh, wraps on needles that are, are already like, you know, this far that, uh, I would like to finish. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So if you have one that you started in, in December and, um, and it's languishing, um, you can pick that up and that'll, that'll be part of it too. So yes. it's going to be fun. 
yes, we will have plenty of prizes. We're entertaining the idea of doing prize for um, participating and using the hashtag and then also another prize set for finished objects just to incentivize us a little more to, to plow through and yep. get them done. Plow through, yep. plow through yep. yeah. So um, with that, if anybody out there wants to, um, you know, put prizes up or um, contribute to the prizes, uh, we are happy to entertain that. Just shoot us an email. It's in the uh, description box below. All right. So our, our new segment is what we've been up to. So it's been about three weeks. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to? Uh, we went on vacation. We went on vacation. So my life is uh, kids, husband husband, kids, um, and grandson. That's uh, what I do. And then, um, so I got, we went to vacation, didn't get to take the grandson, but um, my husband and I, and um, my stepdaughter, college, um, Laura, um, came with us and then our three kids together. And um, we went to Phoenix. We actually stayed in, in a, um, a Airbnb um, in Scottsdale. Uh, we, had fun it was a lot of fun there was a pool and so there was like towards the end there was a couple of days it was rainy and um so that was kind of a bummer so it was a, it was actually cool it was it was like cold and um and we just had to stay in the house but actually my husband took one of the days took the kids to the tramp trampolinium thing mm. i was i'll stay home and get dinner going and which means net yeah that's code was, for net <laughs> yeah <laughs> And uh, he took over. That was like took a big chunk of the day, and they had a blast. So one of the days, another day, we did indoor um, uh, three three D, where you wear the glasses mm -hmm. and golf. golf. Yeah, mini That's golf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a trip because you you think that there's things that you have to step over and stuff like that, <laughs> and there's not. So I I yeah, that was hard. I Not never, the kind of game you want to have a cocktail before. No, no, no. <laughs> nope, that wouldn't have worked. So the kids enjoyed it? They had a blast. That's they awesome. Did. It was like alien, alien themed place there in, in Phoenix. And yeah, that was fun. So, and then um, we went, and I will insert a couple pictures here. Um, I, the, the first full day there, we went to um, the Tempe um, yarn shop and, um, Laura, my stepdaughter, she is a crocheter. I taught her how to crochet um, several years back. She's little. She was, I don't know, eight, nine. And um, how old is she now? 22. It's a long time. Yeah. And oh, she's a very good, very good crocheter. Um, and so she bought some yarn, a cotton blend um, it, to crochet herself. Um, she was gonna, she was gonna do like a granny square top and then she changed her mind and I will post a picture of her in the little top she, she did cause it's adorable and, and it's perfect okay, for her. Okay, hold on. So when we went to dinner the other night, you told me about this and showed me a picture. You guys will see. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I thought she had, she bought the yarn at Tempe Yarn and made it while you were on vacation. Yes. I don't know why and I didn't put it, that together. And wore it. Yeah. She actually made two. Oh, the first wow. one, first one she's told me she wasn't happy with the fit. So she was very smart. So when she did the second one, she kept trying it on and then adjusted and to to fit her, that's which awesome. is you know it's a good skill. Yeah, I told her. I said that's smart. That's I've you know there are several garments that I've knit myself and or crocheted and then never put it on. And then when I got it on, I was like, oh, and yeah, now I put things on several times to make sure that getting the length or the yeah, she did a really great job. That's it looks amazing. Super cute on her. So yeah, I'll put yeah. a picture in. I never picked up that she bought the yarn and made it on yep. vacation. I thought she had yep. made it previously. That's awesome. Yeah, we would sit there around the pool and she'd be crocheting and I'd be knitting it. It was fun. So I'll tell you a funny story. So when you sent me um, text of the kids, um, you know, swimming and mm -hmm. we, so yes, she went on vacation and we still communicate and, um, yeah, I was like, show me, what are you doing? <laughs> I was trying not to bug her, but we talk every day. It's really mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. But um, here's the story. So I was laughing because um, my, so I was born in North Dakota. My dad worked for the government and um, we moved when I was in fourth grade down to Phoenix. And we moved in November. I was in fourth grade. My sister and brother were younger. And there were three of us. And um, in November, we moved to a house in Phoenix with a pool. And 
we swam through January, right? Because it's warm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's still like in the, I mean, it's like in the 60s there, but we came from below zero weather. So oh, I know. it so cracked me up that your kids were swimming and it reminded me of us being little and the neighbors like, who are these people? Where are they from? Why are they swimming in I know. the dead of winter? There was a couple of days there, right? Well, it was just in the 60s, but that pool was heated. Right. And so there's like steam coming up and the, but the kids were still, Laura was in there, Bella, the boys, they were, they were still in there swimming, even though, yeah, I wondered what the neighbors <laughs> Yeah, ours was what not heated, so you guys had it. Better. Oh, but, <laughs> yeah, ours was not heated, but we were like, this is like 60 degree difference. This yeah. is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I did not go on vacation, um, but I'm getting ready to make a trip on Thursday to Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm going to go see my mom and um, my sister is going to be there and my one of my nephews. The verdict's out on the other two nephews. I know one of them is playing baseball like every day of his life, but the other one um, may join us if he doesn't have to work. So that will be fun. It's just going to be an extended weekend, Thursday through Monday. So uh, that will be a lot of fun. I told my mom. I am, I don't want to do anything. I, that's one of the things about your vacation that I was like, yes, it's not like go, 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 nonstop. Yeah, no. Like you cooked, you I hung did. out, I you relaxed. I cooked every day that we were there. Yeah. We were there for a week, cooked every day, but one, the one night I went out with my cousin James mm -hmm. um, and cause he lives there and his wife and we went out and had um, uh, sushi at Blue Wasabi in Queen Creek. Yes. I think that's where we were, or yeah, close. That's right. And um, we went there, and um, and that was the only night that I didn't I didn't cook. But those are the best vacations, right? Like when I mean, don't get me wrong. Like it's nice to go out and do things, and you guys did your fair share of that. Um, but it's also nice just to spend time. And part of vacation for me is like not the bustle and the going and the going. Right. So when I go see my mom, sometimes we'll go down to um, the, the square in Santa Fe. There's all these shops and fun things to do. And I told my mom, I was like, I just want to spend time. Like, let's play cards, hang out. My only request is that you make me minestrone soup. Mm. Like, I have a recipe, but it's just, it's not the same. I know I when your it. mom cooks for yeah. you. I know. My yeah. mom, she would make me a chicken. Like, she, I know how she did it, but it doesn't taste the same. I know. Well, it's that little extra love. So. Mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to that. And since we last met, it has been a busy, busy stretch. Just, you know, life, right? Like, the dryer quit working. Um, the there we're working Karina and um, our friend Angie, the dyer behind Pearls and Pines. The three of us are <laughs> we're working on an up north fiber retreat that is going to take place in January of 2025, and um, here in Bemidji. Yep, here in Bemidji, Minnesota. And we, um, I think we started like, oh yeah, let's get a bunch of people together and have like a big pajama party all weekend and let's knit and crochet and do whatever we're going to do. And, oh, it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. um, in a good way. Like it's fun. We're, we're spending time with each other and we're planning and, um, our hope is that we can just create an environment for, you know, like-minded people to just get together and, you know, forget all of your responsibilities and things going on and just sit by the fire and knit and, and um, be taught by some really incredible instructors that mm -hmm. we're, we're working to secure so um, and create it just an escape for people that mm -hmm. allows them just to get away. So get more that to come up on north that. experience yes. up north here in yeah. Bemidji. In the dead of winter. <laughs> it will be great. Yeah, um, yeah. It will be great. But we will have more information. Um, we're working on kind of the business end of everything right now and securing um, people to be involved. And we'll get some marketing going and social mm -hmm. media going and registration open. And when that happens, we will let you know. Mm -hmm. um, but that has been busy and taking a lot of time. And uh, I was able to um, host a party for my husband. He turned 40. Uh, if you're keeping track, <laughs> I turned 50 in October, he turned 40, and he said to me the other day, um, whew, he's like, the older you get, he's like, it just, I, cause I think everybody came to the party at six and they were, they were gone by 1030. <laughs> he's like, wow, the older you get, people sure do leave in a hurry. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, he's like, it is harder the older you get to keep up. And I was like, 
I, I felt this sense of validation, like, yeah, I've been trying to keep up with you for 10 years. Um, but we did, we sat out afterwards by the fire and just, um, you know, we were able to just hang out and, um, you know, spend some time together. So that was a nice close. And then today, after we're done um, filming here, we are going to go honor Karina's husband mm -hmm. um, for his 50th birthday celebration. So that'll be a good time. Yes. Looking forward to it. Yeah, excited. And yeah, yeah, his 50th birthday. I know. I know. It's crazy. Um, it's crazy to say that, like that we're turning 50. Because mm -hmm. Shane was asking me, like, how okay, how old's Micah? How old's Karina? Um, and then it's like, wow, we all turned like big milestone birthdays mm -hmm. this year. Like him 40, the three of us 50, and um mine's in July. Yeah, yours I'm is still coming. 49. Oh stop. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's been busy, but it's been really, really good and really fulfilling and super productive. So mm -hmm. shall we uh, get into some FOs? Yeah, so we already talked about Ian, so we okay. can go for it. Do you him. want me to? Um, I will dig in with, so after our last podcast, um, our friend Corey from um, I Rock Knits, put out a testing call. I think the test was um, already, can you hold that one? Yeah. I think the test was already um, going um, and I jumped in on it. I had the, the pleasure of jumping in on it, but these are the Pinky Swear socks. And these socks are um, not yet released. They are coming April 22nd. And um, she has a Pinky Swear um, collection. Well, this is Pinky Swear hat, and these are the Pinky Swear socks. And this yarn, you might remember from last time, is um, from the Yarn Brewery, Emily from the Yarn Brewery. And it is the colorway Maple Sugar Party. You might remember the other set from Emily I had is the one that Karina ended up with. We ended up doing a trade last yeah. time. I there it is. Yeah. I, I didn't do anything with it yet. It's just sitting here, but I will. Well, when I saw the pattern mm -hmm. for this, the pink, oh, there you can see the pinky swear pattern. Um, I thought this yarn would be a great pairing. So these socks are coming April 22nd and um, proceeds from these socks, not just from release, but beyond, go to the Pinky Swear Foundation. And the mission of, of this foundation is to help um, kids with cancer and their families with financial um, and emotional support. So Corey is such a precious soul. These are great socks, so fun to knit. I did the 72 stitch and um, on a one and a half to get gauge. Um, but look for these April 22nd. We might peekaboo them again on the next episode just to remind everybody that they're out and um, you can go support um, the Pinky Swear Foundation and our friend Corey from I Rock Knits. Go out and check her out her designs. They're amazing. So many to choose from. Um, but yeah, that's my first FO. They're beautiful. I love them. What a great pattern. You know what? I want to say one more thing. <laughs> this pattern was super fun in that I learned a few things. Um, I'm a Thank you. <laughs> I, I've got ends falling out. <laughs> um, I'm an avid sock knitter. I knit a lot of socks, as you can tell. But this is the first time that I have done an anatomically correct um, toe. Toe, yeah, where you're um, decreasing on one side to fit the natural curve of the toes. Right. And then you just at the end here, I've not done that before. And then the heel is, um, whoops, I dropped it. Thank you. Um, the heel is a box heel. I've not done that either. It's a slip stitch, um, heel flat, but yeah, just learned some new things. Um, the other thing I learned in this pattern, um, is a different way of picking up, um, the stitches on the heel flap. Um, so Check out this pattern. Go buy it. Support the Pinky Swear Foundation and learn a new, um, a couple of new techniques if you haven't already done it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So my finished object. I I did post pictures of this on my Instagram. Um, but this is a test knit I did for um, this bird knits. Um, it's the Alfie. Here. Um. Yeah. I, I love the way this turned out. It came out. We should put the I... picture in of you wearing it too, because it yeah. is so gorgeous yeah. on you. I can do that. Thank you. Oh, it is Thank so you. Um, it is knit in 100% super fine alpaca that I bought um, when we were at Rhinebeck. Um, I intended to knit a sweater for my husband. <laughs> 
and um but when i saw the test call for alfie um and she um, got back to me and said i um was part of it then i knew you know um that i had to grab that and use it um i ended up dropping down a needle size um because the the yarn that i got i i held it double and because i think it was um you know around a sportish um, weight and so I held it double um, and um, ended up dropping down a needle size to to, to do Alfie and you know because we all just have to influence each other oh yeah <laughs> when I saw so when I saw you knitting it I was like oh that's very beautiful like super super pretty and then I saw it on you and I was like that is happening so um, Karina and I have been we shared uh, on a prior episode that we're going to go to Rhinebeck again this year and it will be our second time and last year we um we did the tessellated mm -hmm. um by, by Andrea Andrea Maui. Maui. Mm -hmm. yep and um I told Karina like this should be one of our uh Rhinebeck sweaters Ooh. and I have the exact same yarn um yep. but mine is in a brown it's yeah very... mine was called silver fox mm -hmm. um I don't remember what yours is but we had to go back. Brown. I'm like, can we go back? Because when she showed me that, so I, I wasn't cool. with her when she bought it. Because you held it double, right? Yeah, I held yeah. it double. And um, and then when we got, we went with a couple other ladies. And so we got back to the house after the first day and everybody showed their purchases because we weren't always all together. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to have some of that. <laughs> so that's how I ended up with that. So that and so she has the, the uh, uh, just a different color a little slightly different mm -hmm. it's just brown but I will cast that on that can be one of them you're gonna see another one of our Rhinebeck sweaters today mm -hmm. you know one of the things that was super stressful like our hobby shouldn't be stressful right mm -hmm. but it was super stressful last year like the pattern came out in July and it was it was it's beautiful tessellated is beautiful it was a slog like it's mosaic knitting so and I you, did it twice you basically. did because you had to rip it because out. I got to a certain point you know I got about this far on the body because it's bottom it's bottom yeah bottom up and I'm like I've told my husband it's too, gonna be way too big we should wear our tessellateds together next time yeah we let's do that yeah yeah um and then, can see them. And then I so I I didn't even rip it out because it, you, I had the mohair in there, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't. And I was like, you had to "Luckily, sacrifice it. <laughs> luckily, I, I, I saved it till I finished the sweater. I had enough of the yarn that I finished another sweater. And when I was done with the second version that fit way better, I just threw it away. I was sad. Yeah, you don't need it. I mean, well, sometimes I you just have to say farewell because it's too hard to rip apart. I said farewell. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that one? Nope. Okay. Uh, we, we have to put your picture in though because you're gorgeous in it. You're gorgeous anyway, but that sweater on you is amazing. Tessellated? No, this one. Oh, Alfie, yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, Tessellated is too. But... I know, but <laughs> nope, Alfie. But no, I was talking definitely. about the Alfie. It there will be a picture in before we said that stuff. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> your figure in that is uh, amazing. Thank you. Okay, so my next FO is just some um, playing around one night. You guys saw last time I was using some I-cord, using the Cordsmith. Those are so awesome. Yeah. So they're just coasters. Do you want me to using hold? There you go. Yeah, hold Scraps. On. There you go. All the scraps. Those are awesome. So um, I am going to just set them about the craft room and the living room and just um, use them for coasters. Yeah. That's pretty handy. Isn't that fun? Do you want these ones? Yes, please. Okay. Thank they you. Kinda, I feel like they kind of match. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um. I'll make more of them. I don't know. I had that big, so I learned when I made them. They're super fun. So the pattern is out of the very last Pom Pom magazine. I think it was 40, number 48-ish. No, it was 48. It was the last one. And the pattern is called Woven Glow. And the yarn that I used is a plethora of scraps. And then I used the Cordsmith tool, which we'll have linked below. Um, but the Cordsmith tool is... Um, just a really fun way to make I-cord and you can do applied I-cord with it. You can do all of the things. So I had a, I was playing with the tool when I bought it for us for Christmas and I had this big ball. And so I thought, you know, 
I'm just gonna make these coasters. And when I made the coasters, I was like, oh, you only need like a certain length of I-cord because you have to weave it around cardboard and do all the things. So I ended up cutting it and playing with it. But yeah, super fun, just for something different. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, cool. Any other FOs? I, nope, I just okay. worked on sweaters. Yeah, don't say I just worked on them, they're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I have a couple of more, we'll buzz through. This is just an honorable mention. You saw these last time, and the reason I'm showing them to you again, these are the Titty Gaga socks by Nancy Wheeler of Knit Sip Happy. Um, and they released yesterday, April the 5th, and um, proceeds of these socks are going to support um, breast cancer research. Um, in Canada. So N Nancy is from Canada. So sales from yesterday, April 5th through April 13th are to support Canadian um, breast cancer research. In addition to this pattern, she did um, the Tits Up Socks last year as a breast cancer fundraiser. I love sh that she does this. Like, mm -hmm. um, And so um, go and support Nancy. Um, the pattern is super fun. It's got some detail on the back. Um, detail on the back of the sock and that's gonna fall there you go okay so this pattern and this pattern whoops nancy knits a pappy titty gaga uh pinky swear foundation Corey, i rock knits next time we meet we are going to give away two of these patterns two of these patterns to support the causes, both the Pinky Square Foundation and Canadian Breast Cancer Research. So um, comment below, any old comment will do. We're not picky. <laughs> we love to hear about what you're doing, what you got going on, um, but we will pick um, four different winners of four patterns, two of each. So we can support our ladies and their causes because mm -hmm. they're amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, I have um, another pair of socks. So um, there's two, but for, for purposes of uh, easy management, these are um, scraps. So the self-striping is uh, Felici. Um, it is Knit Picks Felici, which is no longer, sadly. They yeah. have like a different base, but they've switched it all up. So um, this is an old um, base and an old colorway no longer available. I cranked this on my sock machine. The um, heels, toes, and cuffs are all afterthought, and it is the afterthought pieces are all out of linen quill. And these will just go in my gift basket. Mm -hmm. I just was trying to use up some extra scraps. All right, my last FO makes me sick. And yeah, happy at I the same see, time. I see what you're talking about. You were telling me about these. Yeah. Okay. These are, I think this way, like these are amazing. Um, they are DK socks, super, super fun to knit. Um, just a vanilla pattern. I think I used, um, a Kay Litton, crazy sock lady, um, DK vanilla sock pattern. And the yarn is timber yarns from, um, and it's their work sock bundle in a DK. I did uh, 48 stitches in a size three needle. They're amazing, they're super squishy. So if we come in close, mm -hmm. you can see that when I blocked them, I got some bleeding, which is not, I mean, I was so bummed, but it's not the end of the world, like they're fine. Um, I was gonna put them in my gift basket. I do that throughout the year. I just make socks and mm -hmm. I have so many that I'll make them and just put them in the gift basket and um, come Christmas time or birthdays or whenever I just need a little something, something, I will um, pull them out. But I am not gonna give away sure. something with bleeding like that. And look, it didn't do it on the toe of this one. So it did it here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I thought about, um, I thought about doing like some duplicate stitching over the white because I have plenty of the white left and I'm like, no, it's not happening. So I am the proud owner of, uh, these beautiful DK socks. Timber yarns, is, it was great yarn to work with. It's super soft. Um, it's super soft. It feels great. These will be another pair of fish shelf socks for me. I'm just going to put them in my drawer. They're just not the quality I would give to somebody with the running, um, which is fine. 
I feel so like maybe you ought to explain Fish House. Oh, um, it, yeah. So if you're thinking uh, about the movies um, with Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon, Grumpy Old Man, that's not it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess we could put in a picture of the Fish House. Um, I have one where you can kind of see. Yeah. It's basically, so up in northern Minnesota and other northern parts of the world, um, we have an ice castle fish house. In fact, my husband and I own a business, um, S&J Outdoors, and we do fish house rentals. And um, it's basically, think about like a an RV in the summer. It has a bathroom and um, little kitchen. Kitchen, and yeah. F TVs. Slide outs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, so, and then there's holes in the floor and you fish. Mm -hmm. And it is mine and my husband's favorite thing to do together. Like, we're, we're not home at all on the weekends in the, in the winter because we're in the fish houses. Um, but yeah, it is so much fun. We'll put in a picture so you can see what I mean by fish house. But thank you for saying that yeah. because it's so first nature to me. I don't even think that. When I moved here, um, it's 16 years ago, I moved here and I got here in March and I got my first job. And I remember the lady saying, oh, because it was uh, where I was working was right on the lake, um, Lake Bemidji. Oh, yeah. And um, they said, oh, if you wouldn't hear a couple weeks earlier that it was like a town on the lake. And there was all, all these fish houses. And I was like, my brain did not compute that. I didn't, I'm trying to, they're like, oh yeah, people park on the lake. And I'm like, what? You drive on that and you, and yeah, no. So do you want to hear a funny story? So I, um, I this had to be 15 years ago and I was traveling a ton for work. Oh yeah, I have heard this one before. <laughs> so funny. So <laughs> I'm traveling and we have, so we live um, four and a half hours north of the Twin Cities. So we take a regional jet out of Bemidji into the cities. There's always a connection. So, um, and I, back then, um, I mean, I was traveling 50, 48 out of 52 weeks a year for work. It was, mm -hmm. it was crazy, but I knew um, all of the flight attendants and pilots and we were, I was on the same flight every week, both in and out. And um, this one flight I took down to the cities, there was this, um, and it was back when they had the prop planes, right? So they weren't even like the the CJ, like the jets so, we have now, right? Yeah. Like they were like two seats and one seat on each side. So in front of me is a husband and wife and across the aisle is their, their realtor. And they had been up here looking at lake property. Mm. And we're flying over the lake, and it was what you just described. This is what me, made me think of it. It was like that there's a town on the lake, mm -hmm. the frozen lake. There's all these fish houses and four wheelers and trucks and mm -hmm. all the things, and people are fishing. And um, the lady leans over and says to her husband, I think it's so sweet that they just find a way to give to the homeless in these, you know, really cold, blistery months that they can, you know, <laughs> that they house them on the lake. And I was like, Oh, perspectives, everything, right? So I was like, I mean, that's not silly if you don't know any better. Um, but I thought it was an interesting, um, and here it is, just a bunch of us who uh, like to fish and so are obsessed. But I thought it was funny because it did, it's a good lesson, right? That um, your perspective on things is, you know, comes from your own frame of reference and your experiences. Uh -huh. And that's why I love that you said, can you explain what a fish house is? Yeah. Because we just don't think sometimes, right? No, I, <laughs> no, I didn't get it at all. Yeah. Well, awesome. So that um, that rounds out the FOs, and we have some whips mm -hmm. that we can get into. Do you wanna you wanna head us off or? Well, yep. Yeah. Oh, let's do this one. Um, I'm just. That bag is adorable. Yeah. So we'll talk about the bag. It's from Bath and Body Works. I can't believe it. It's such. It's a perfect <laughs> project. I love. I love bunnies. When did you get it? Uh, so we were. Um, because when we uh, left for our vacation, we had to leave a couple of days early and um, head down to, to the cities. And we stayed at the uh, Radisson Blue uh, attached to Mall of America uh, because up here, there was a bad storm. It was awful. And um, we knew it was coming and we um, didn't want to get stuck up here because the, the, the one of the worst days was going to be the day we were supposed to fly out. So we decided to drive down in the cities and we stayed at Radisson Blue and uh, we took the kids to Nickelodeon World and whatnot. And over there in that area where the Nickelodeon stuff is, is a Bath and Body Works. So while Laura, um, our college age daughter, was um, riding rides with the kids, we walked over uh, to Bath and Body Works. And I just wanted, I wasn't like, because we were going to leave still, so I couldn't go buy a bunch of candles or anything like that. But I just wanted to see what they had in this you know, like three times bigger store than we have up here. 
and I saw the, the, the bag. And so it was recent. Oh yeah, this was just what a week and a half ago, two, or two weeks ago, two weeks ago now. Um, and yeah, I was I like, that'd it. be a perfect sock knitting bag. It's super cute. I love bunnies, as I've said before. I have vanilla socks in there. Um, finished a sock. These have been on the needles actually for quite a while because they were in my purse. They were my um, purse socks that when we go anywhere, it's self striping you know, uh, or whatever yarn. Um, but I can't find the, I had two of them. One was slightly different, but I couldn't find, I can't find what it. What yarn is it? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I can't, oh. I, couldn't, I got it at Stephen B down in, in, uh, Minneapolis. I got it at Stephen B. Um, you were with me. We went, oh, I got it when we went for the yarn shop hop and mm. I got two of them and it was on the sale table. Stretch it out. It's a little big. It's, yeah, it's all right. But anyways, um, and the second one is here. It's beautiful. And just turn the heel. Yeah, just fun. A little progress keeper. Piece cake. Of, piece of Let cake. there be cake. Yeah. Love it. I got this when I was there, though. Hand cream. Vanilla. Mm. Buttercream. Vanilla buttercream. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know what the yarn is. Hey, if you're stash diving or you lose the label, you can't I lost it all, the label right? and I know I have another ball of it, but I could not I <laughs> I looked everywhere this morning. I'm like, I can't find it. So yeah. All right. I'm gonna do um my first whip is in this beautiful black pearl magic bag. I love this bag. Did you see that she is doing um, a holiday themed box? No. With, I know. I know. I don't want to say it out loud, but I really want one. But it's, um, you can have your pick of like a, a bag like this or a drawstring one. And then these beautifully curated notions. So I've really been trying to resist. But, um, you know, you play you learn, yarn chicken, you lose. You try to resist, you lose. I'm probably going to lose this one because I really, really want it. So, um, this is my Novelli tea. I'm trying to find the marker from the last time we podcast. So, this is a t-shirt. Oh, last time we met, I was down here where this ring is. Um, so, that's the progress that I've made. Gosh, it's so pretty. I love it. So, um, the I'm using um, Linen Quill by Pearl Soho. And it is in the colorways, um, the orange, I love the name, is Sweet Potato. Mm. And um, what looks to be white is really kind of a pink color. And it is called Pink Peony. Mm -hmm. And then once I get past, we'll put a picture in so you can see all the color work. Once we're past the color work, the entire remainder of the garment um, t-shirt is going to be this dark denim color. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see it done. Yeah. So I've had a couple of test knits in the mix. The one for um, I Rock Knits that I showed, the Pinky Swear. I have another one for Nancy Wheeler of Knit Sip Happy. It's a secret test. I can't show it right now. Um, so I've been busy working on other things, but this one has really been calling to me. So this is my progress. This is, hey, you know, like when you pack for a trip, right? Like you showed a post on Insta where you were like, when your yarn uh, gets its own suitcase or something like that. Oh, right? yeah, I had it. I had <laughs> When I went on a trip, I had a suitcase just for my stuff. Yeah. Um, my yarn stuff, um, everything I wanted to work on. And I did. I worked on, and then I ended up, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm not going to bring a whole suitcase because um, I'm gone a couple of days, but I am going to bring this to work on and another tea that I started on an insane whim last night at like 1030 at night. When I should have been sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's my Novelli tea. We'll put that in so you can see I'm using size four needles and, um, it is, I, linen quill is one of my favorites. It's versatile. I haven't done anything with that yet, but you think I mean, about it all the time. I have a beautiful pink color. I should just give you three hanks of it. You could make something gorgeous. I have so much because when it goes on sale for like 30 and 40% off, I mean, you can get a sweaters quantity. 
I got like last podcast I shared, I got three sweater quantities for under a hundred dollars. Like, come on. Wow. Um, and it's just lovely to work with. So we'll have to get you knitting on it sometime soon. Yeah. You'll love it. Yeah. You want to give me something? I, yeah, I will. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. Uh, my turn, right? So, yes. um, I know that I went in dream knitting. I talked about the sweater, um, the willow branch. Um, so I was talking about, this is also, I guess this is kind of also could be on um, acquisitions or um, community service that we sometimes like to talk about. Um, Willow Branch by uh, Tiff Nealon, the designer. Um, I am, I'm really fond of her. I've knit a sweater and of hers before. Um, and this is the, the beginning of Willow Branch. Do you hold it? So... You can't really tell what I'm doing here yet. This is the we'll top. have a picture in though of yep. the whip so you can see. Yep, and it's the pattern doesn't say holding with um, mohair. Um, it's um, but I'm doing that. I That's guess. you expressing your creativity. Yep, I love it. Yep, and this. Um, so when we got to Phoenix, we went to the Tempe Yarn Shop, um, and this is. I got this there. Oh, and this is Dialicious Yarns, dyed there in Arizona. I love that's the Arizona flag. Yeah. So I that's went fun. in the shop um, with Laura and my stepdaughter, and um, I said I wanted local, you know, yarn so that I could do a project. It's called Desert Breeze, um, Living Coral. Yeah. And then I'm holding it with this, which is the Lane Mohair Lux. It's just super soft. I'm holding them together and it's very, I mean, I to me, it's, this says Arizona. I mean, desert, right? Yes, yep. Phoenix. So I cast that on Gorgeous. and that's kind of what held me up from finishing some things that I intended to finish during, during my um, trip because then I had another project on the needles and one day I was just totally obsessed with it. Um, I have put it, I was literally told this morning, um, knitting from the bag. Oh, I'll show it to you. The Tempe yarn bag. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yes. Sorry about the crinkle. So that's what it looked like. The shop was really cute. I will put a picture in of the shop I took when we were standing outside. Um, the, they were so friendly in there and so helpful and it, that's a busy yarn shop probably the busiest yarn shop I have ever been in um they do classes all the time um teaching all the things um weaving and knitting crocheting um it's great little yarn shop and yeah they were very very helpful and they they are the ones that caked all the yarn for me um I loved it and I, amazing I, 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 this reminds me of Steph, actually, when I saw this stuff, because her, her hubby, Mike, is into uh, Sasquatch, and th that's what that is. That's a, a Bigfoot knitting. Funny sticker. I, I didn't know they had Bigfoot in Arizona, but I guess Bigfoot's everywhere. Um, <laughs> I uh, love Halloween. You guys will see. So I got this sticker. I have a couple sweaters I've knit in Halloween. You know, mm -hmm. they're so good. And this is a shawl pen with the, yeah, that's what I got there. Um, and the bag that I, so anyways, the bag I'm using is one I got, the um, Daisy Girl. I got the, I actually got this bag at sweater camp, not last year, but the year before, my first sweater camp. I got this bag. I love it's, the peekaboo on that too. Like it's so fun to look at our yarn. Yes. Love it. That actually my first peekaboo bag I ever owned was one you made. Remember the camping bags? Yeah. With the for sweaters for um sock camp. Yep. Sock camp bags. Yeah. It's hard. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say for me, I sew. You know, I think I'm pretty good at sewing bags. You are. Um, I had a hard time putting the this in, so I'd rather just buy one <laughs> <laughs> and try to sew one myself. I love it. Yeah. All right. How many more whips do you have? Just the the one. Um, yeah, the same as you. 
Okay, what do you I'm have? I'm going to do one more first then. Okay. Um, so I am holding this, this beautiful, okay, this is really wrinkled because I get, it gets a lot of use and I just took it out of the, um, I just took it out of the washer and the dryer is broken again. I didn't tell you that as of this morning. So Time we think it's one. burning the circuit. Yeah. You know what I want? I want an old school washer and dryer. It doesn't need to be fancy. I don't want all the bells and whistles and I buttons know. and all the things. I just want it to work. I know. Um, anyway, so this is the whip that jumped on my needles miraculously after a glass of wine last night <laughs> at 1030. Um, and it's honestly, You know what? When you're feeling it. You got to do it. Yep. And you know what? I wasn't going to do it. And you know what you said to me on text? See, you're the problem. You're the real problem. You're the enabler. She texted me and she was like, do what makes you happy. And I was like, yes, girl. Yes, do what makes me happy. And here we are. Um, but what prompted it wasn't necessarily the pattern. It is, I showed this last time. This is the um, Pearl Soho Sweetgrass. It is just insane. It's a organic cotton and super fine alpaca blend, like a 65-35 um, so good. And we'll put a picture in of the whip I'm making. It is the, um, summer flirt tea. And, um, this is it, this little baby. It's tiny. So, um, this is the first time though. I'm learning all kinds of new things. Like I've knit for a long time, like not as long as some people, but yeah, I mean, I'm not a beginner. Mm -hmm. And, but it is the first time that I've done, um, short rows, in the in ribbing, the ribbing. Mm -hmm. um so that's really fun but it is a baby we'll put the picture in so that you can see what it is gonna be when it grows up but I'm really looking forward to wearing it so this is the other one that I'm going to take on vacation the Novelli tea and the summer flirt tea and um the summer flirt tea will have linked below I cannot remember who it's by Jillian I don't know I'll, I'm gonna screw that up. I'll put it below and it wasn't in my show notes so we keep show notes and we can just cut them, paste them right in, but it's not on there because it, I seriously miraculously jumped on the needles last night at 1030 prior or like after I had already planned, but we'll make sure it's in the notes below and we'll put a picture in. Okay. Do you want to leave this one off? And then, um, we're both knitting the same thing. <clears throat> we are. This is going to be our, um, our... Ryan Beck sweater that we're knitting and Jen and I sat down when um we were um that was that day we podcast planning when we went mm -hmm. right before the second or no, no no we went oh we were at Bayside yeah and we were just hanging out had a little look this is how it went so I'll just tell on us because we yeah. don't care so we're sitting there. We were going to go um, podcast planning. We had a plan. We were going to go to like Christmas Point. We were going to go and... Um, in Walker. In, in Walker. Walker. There's a shop called Christmas Point. And it's so fun. Yes. Oh, we did go there. But mm -hmm. um, Karina's like, change of plans. Let's go have lunch. So we went and we went to Bayside. And we were sitting there and we were talking about, you know, running back. Like we're all excited. We do this big like build up to it. And mm -hmm. you should if you're going to spend the money and you're excited about going. Like have fun with it. So we were sitting there and um, we were talking, she had, it was you that came up with the pattern. And I was like, yes, I love that. Mm -hmm. And it was in that moment we decided to buy bad sheep yarn, mm -hmm. bad girls buying bad sheep yarn, like on a whim. On a whim, totally. It was like, I w it, like if there was like, you know, like um, the timer, like you play chess, right? And there's the timer. If we had a timer going for how fast you can buy a sweaters quantity of yarn, <laughs> like yeah, we would have won. It was it was like three minutes flat. Yeah, we knew color. We hadn't looked at anything, but we were locked in on colors, all the things. Except when I got mine. Yeah, and you know sometimes it arrives and you're like, yeah, I like this, but uh, this not. I don't know anymore. I'm thinking I don't want to do the sweater in this. I will make something else out of it. So I ended Did up. Did you switch all your colors? Except for the color work part at the same okay. okay. The ruby. So we're, yeah, we're doing the Cold Sunlight. Um, By Melanie Berg. Okay. I didn't write that down, but you yeah. have a good. And um, we'll insert a picture here of it 
um, so you can see what it's supposed to look like and our, our inspiration. So then when you see the picture, you can kind of see where I went. I found it's worsted. Do you know how long it's, can we have a minute for worsted? Do you know how long it's been since I've knit anything like beyond a fingering? Like, yeah, well, I, this is also an, I mean, an Alfie and so I know, we, but you're inspiring me. Like, um, I mean, I love a good fingering, but I, yeah, worsted. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, I, um, changed it up. I had stuff in my, um, in my set. Actually, I had bought this from Lavender Loon. Sam. If you don't know Sam from Lavender Loon, go check her out right now. Check out her holiday box. Sorry, I could not, not PSA for yeah. her because I love her. I, um, so she was one of the casualties of, um. Woolen Folk. Yes. And so afterwards, um, there was, you know, um, go visit their websites, you know, kind of help them out and, um, or yeah, help them out. And I went on there and I bought this. This is Bellatrix. It is 70% um, Minnesota mohair, 30% tar tardy. tardy, and um, it's worsted, local mill spun. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so this is the main color on- so on my sweater, my I um, it. my cold sunlight. It's really, really soft. It's yes. Yeah. I wonder where it was spun. I think that she has a mill she works with in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. I think is what she told me. But it says way. local. That's local. Okay. Well, she raises the sheep. Yes. And it goes right across the river to get spun. So I gotcha. Okay. Localish. All right. And so um, I have two fingering weights that I'm holding together. I'm sorry. I didn't keep the little. I will hold. But right now I'm working on it. Um, is the, These are two different colors, correct? Yep. This is a darker. I don't know yeah. if you can see. It's kind of. They're different. I just up. grabbed them and I'm knitting them together. And. Okay, so you're not holding each one of them double. You're holding no, them together. as double, yeah. I love it. Okay, cool. So That's what I love. Can I just tell you, like, not that you need my validation or me to tell you what I love, but you play with stuff so much that it is, it just so becomes your own. Like, I'm a pattern follower. Like, when you were talking about you and Laura, like, trying things on, and mm -hmm. I, I want to do better at that. And the way you play with texture and color and... I, I so admire that. Like, Thank I you. love it. Thank you. Well, yeah. The yarn textures are, are different, but I think it's going to be okay with the way this turns out. So you're at, we're at the, at the top. That's the neck hole. Um, and you, you do this part first and then you knit down seven inches. Then you put on hold. I just did this. I didn't do those cords. I wasn't. I just put it on the yarn. You got to use whatever you got handy. Yeah, that's what was in the, that was, Yeah, and then <laughs> um, and so then you uh, pick up stitches and you start, and so that's that's the top here, and it's yeah. gonna come down, and you'll see the picture come down here. Anyways. Yeah, we'll eventually join in the round. And then there's color work at the bottom, and I did keep. This is the one, and color. that is bad sheep yarn worsted in the colorway root. Why do I have Rubios. Rubios. It's T. R O O I B O S. Yeah, I can Rubios. spell it. I can't say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's that's amazing. What are you holding it in? Is that a bag by you? Oh, yes. Yeah, let's see the bag by you. Bag by me. Bag by Karina. I, I made part. this. Oh, hey, look, it has bunnies on it. I know. It's amazing. It's Peter Rabbit. Who would have thought? Peter Rabbit is my favorite. Um, I actually got this little iron on decal and stuck it on there, but the, the fabric is actually a receiving blanket that I bought for my grandson, um, to have here, um, when he was a little tiny and then, um, I decided to take it and turn it into a bed. So that's what I did. I love it. Um, I like the inside fabric too. Yeah. This was it's beautiful. Just in my stash, fabric stash. Yep. Yeah, made it for myself. Awesome. Thanks, bye, Karina. All right, cold sunlight by me, <laughs> Melanie Bird pattern. Um, so I mentioned chop shop stitch on the last podcast. I have several of her bags. She is fantastic. Go follow her on Instagram. Um, this is her label. 
chop shop stitch. And this bag is inspired by Neons and Neutrals. Now you can see like oh, the, just the, the zipper and all the things. Um, so it's, I love that it, the zipper is two-toned. So one side is the tan and the other side is the orange. And if you have the Neons and Neutrals bag by um, Amigili from Ooh, Lobby Anime. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over my colors first. So my colors are, that is uh, Honey Brie. This is Bonbon. Bon. And this is Rubio's. So we both have the same color that we'll share in common for our color work. And this is the three minute buy from Bad Sheep Yarn at the, um, at the Bayside Bar and Grill. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, um, thank you. This is mine. Oh, look like a good podcaster. I am midway through a row. Okay. So this is. Again, the neck hole. You work the front to about seven inches. Yeah, a little bit seven. Yeah, not much. And then this is the back. No. Front. This is the front I'm working now. You start with the back. Yeah. Lots of so, short rows. And I'm mid I'm mid row, because awesome. And um this just shows you like I've told you like in the what's up with us what we've been doing like life is crazy chaotic work is busy we got a bunch going on so much so that I I couldn't even, <laughs> I couldn't even match them my <laughs> but they work and they're fine and, yeah and I got them on doesn't so matter yeah yeah so it's all good it's working but um I am super happy with my color choice yes I really love the speckles yours. are just amazing and then that that um this red in there it's just that color work at the bottom is in a pop. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited about this one. Yeah, me too. I'm, every time I pick it up, I just knit, 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 knit. I'm, you know, it's, and then that's what I, I honestly, that sweater is the one I really have been wanting to knit on, but I, I wanted to get this done. I'm not going to take this one with me um, mm -hmm. on my trip because I'm going to get to the seven inches on the front and then I'm going to lay it flat and either steam it or wet block it. I haven't decided yet because it just, I feel like the neck needs opened up and then it's a drop sleeve. Mm -hmm. So that ribbing, I feel like once you open that ribbing up, it'll just, I want to just be sure it fits. And then the only way I know to, I know to do that is to, to really block it out. I'll just put the picture in twice yeah. when I'm talking about it and then we'll do it again. Maybe when we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get the gist nonetheless. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that rounds out my whips. Uh, did you have anything else nope. for whips? Nope. Should we get into some dream knitting? Yeah. My turn? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Jen Steingass. Love her. Yeah. She had a sale. I'm not sure if it's still going on. I'm sorry. But I purchased that pattern, printed it out. I have yarn um, that I'm thinking about using, but I'm not married to it yet. Um, I don't know. What colors are you thinking? Like very similar. Okay. The, see, because this what a lot of times for me, what draws me to a pattern is the colors that the, the, the designer used. Yeah. And then I, that's, I, I want to do something very similar. Um, a lot of times. And mm -hmm. so um, I already have another um, a sweater I have finished. I'll wear it at some point. Um, I did it in Seahawks colors because um, I love my Seahawks. Um, anyways, and I'll wear that at some point. Uh, I'm really excited actually to cast this on. I, I think that's coming in the near future. Um, just still thinking about uh, yarn I wanna use. I love it. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm sure everybody has seen, I shouldn't say that, I'm sure everybody has seen, but it's certainly popular right now, and that is the Jethro. It's just, it's, um, it's by Tanis Lovely, it's, um, it's knit and crochet, so you can see the granny squares, but then the ribbing um around um you know the button band and collar the hem at the bottom the sleeves and their and their ribbing all knit so it's a fun play with crochet and knit 
And I know you will remember these, Karina, but I have been looking for something to do with these. Oh, hey, you're ahead. Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to make them work because I don't think they're the precise dimensions. I'm going to show you this way. Well, have you blocked them yet? Yes. Oh. They're blocked, but I think hers are like a half inch more, which I'm like, that's fine. I'll just do more of a border because there's a, um, right. a color that brings them all together. Yeah. So here's what they look like. And these were, um, I love this color mix. Like, oh, just... yeah. So these were in my Row One Minis last summer oh. from um, Candy Shop Yarns. Oh, Deborah. Love... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I, and I've just, so Row One Minis, you get um, these 10, 10 gram um, mini skeins, and they feature a different dyer every single month. I have since postponed my subscription because I had so many, but I'm also finding that I'm really working through them lately with some of the scrappy blankets. But I just kept these because I love the palette. And so I haven't decided what to do with them. But when that pattern came out, I was like, I think these are going to be a Jethro. Now, I will have to, I'm a few short um, for the back mm. and the front to all come together. So um, I'll have to crochet a few more, but I'm sure I can find complementary colors from another row one or any other scraps I have laying around and then just decide on a main. But uh, this is going to come sometime soon. So, so yeah. I, um, this pattern is a new pattern by Tiffany Lynn again. She is your fave. I think so. Yeah. I really do love her patterns. It is the Birch and Muffs. And this one, I already know what yarn I'm going to um, use. What weight is it? Do you know? <sighs> oh, yeah, it's on there. DK. That's, it looked like a DK, but I love... But you hold it with mohair. I've been looking for a DK shawl. Yeah, you hold it with mohair. Beautiful. Do you have ideas for yarn on that one? Yep. I love it. Yep, I have actually, I have the yarn right here. So I got this a long time ago. Oh, lichen and lace? Yeah, this is, I don't even know. I've had it before we even moved into this house. So oh, wow. I've had this sitting there. I, it came in the little bag. Um, Isn't it so rewarding to use stash, things you've had around, like they finally reveal what they wanna be? Yeah, but now I was like, I know That's exactly amazing. what I am going to do. I know this is weird, but the lichen and lace, I love how they sew the zigzag on their labels. Yeah. I don't know why I love that so much. It's a little detail that I'm attracted this to. This one's called I See Seashells. <laughs> Let's say that 10 times fast. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and no, I'm good. The other one is Daylily. Oh, yeah. I see that. Daylily. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Reminds me of a tiger lily, actually. Yeah. I have a beautiful, like, orange and red one. So that's what I'm going to do that with. Love it. All right, my last dream knitting is the Kennedy Tank by Anna DeQ. But look at that beautiful. Oh, wow. The front you can see is um, it's just pretty plain Jane, which is okay because that back is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I want to to knit this. This is gonna as soon as I finish one of the tees. Or not. It might be a 1030 tonight. Have fun. <laughs> Who knows? But um, I very much want this for the summer on the boat over my swimsuit, you know, hanging out and knitting on the boat and the pontoon while my husband fishes. Yep. Catches yep. dinner. Yep. So yeah, Kennedy Tank by Anna Deku. Just beautiful detail on that. All right. Um, well, last time we filmed, there was a little bit of um, community service piggery going on. I watched the last episode just as we were um, editing, and I was like, ooh, that was a lot of acquisitions, um, which is fine. We're cool with. Mm -hmm. I don't, I only have one this time, right? We said sometimes it's feast, sometimes it's famine. So I'll do mine, and then you can just do all yours. Yeah. Because I literally have one. Okay. And I'm in love with it. It is speckled jelly bean. You guys, can you even with these speckles? Can you see the hot pink and the green and the gold? Oh, I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Pearls and pines. 
our friend Angie. Oh, can we have a minute for Angie too? So Angie's the one that um, she hosts Knit Night, you saw on Instagram, or if you didn't go check us out on Instagram, um, but she hosts Knit Night and um, she's the dyer behind Pearls and Pines, but she also recently announced, for those of you who are uh -huh. in Minnesota, we are getting another yarn shop in Bemidji. And um, it is so stinking cute, like the logo. It's going to be mm -hmm. called the Yarn Cabin. And it's this big puffed out, like, um, wound um, ball of yarn with a roof on it. Yarn cap, so cute. Um, but she is in the process. She's going to open May 1st and um, do her, continue her dyeing and expand her inventory to include, you know, other other brands and things so mm -hmm. this is a monthly box that i get from um angie from pearls and pines this was the i get it too was it march or april i don't remember this april. is april this is april and um i'm in love her she, the thing she does with speckles when she doesn't drop the whole thing in did you see that you i know yeah. i was laughing i'm like that's why i don't die um but it came with um this cute little notebook and pen candy and then um, this cute little candy stitch marker. Yeah. So cute. Oh, these are the things that make what we do even more fun, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that is my only one. So um, for those of you, we get a lot of folks in the comments who are like in Minnesota somewhere or in neighboring states. So um, once it opens, you'll have to come check it out. I'm really excited. I am so excited too. I'm excited for her. She works really hard and she's good at what she does. Okay, so I um I'm gonna start with I got this. <gasps> Knit a box of socks. Yes. I've seen that. Um I um when we got to our um Airbnb there in Scottsdale, um they here in Bemidji we don't have this. Other places I'm sure they do, but um uh, Amazon can you, you get same day delivery next day delivery whatever and um, I'd been want I'd been wanting this for a while and um, I just looked to see if I could get it and I could and so I did and that's why I picked Amazon. And you ordered it from Amazon to yep. your Airbnb? Yep. I love that so much. That's what I did. Because <laughs> up here where we live, just for those of you who have, like, it blew my mind when I went to my brother's and I was like, I can order Amazon and get it in a couple of hours. That's right. foreign to us. That does not happen no. where we live. We live in a very rural area. and um, So yeah, I, I only it. did it the, that one time I got this. And so I, I um, needed um, a cable, a, a longer cable. I brought two sets of knitting needles, but I didn't check to see which cables were in there. And I needed... Mm longer yeah so we I have, have a the... set from moon glow yarn co from last year in all these colors i might have to get this yeah so much fun so i can't say her last name julianne lebowthiller lebowthiller sure. i think i'm really close sounds good hopefully i am um, I follow her on Instagram. She's got lots of cute videos and stuff that she does. Uh, YouTube, uh, too. So, yeah. I wanted this for a while, and I, I got it. So, yeah, that's... Do I keep going? I guess yeah, I keep I, going. Yeah, I had one. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to make my husband watch this segment. I just feel like I only had one. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is our, um, our friend Katie from Hummingbird Yarn. And this is her club yarn. Um, I'm showing you because next month we are going to do a giveaway with this. Um, one month, her um, monthly. One month of her monthly subscription. And it will be the, a, the May. Yes, May. And we will, um, so I won't show what I get in our nest in our, when it comes um, because we'll be giving it away. But um, yeah. That's part of it. So uh, comment below to be um, entered in it. I love this. This is called April Showers. Isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. And I get this one too. We both support mm -hmm. our, our local Bemidji dyers and get their subscription boxes. Mm -hmm. um, because who would we be if we didn't? <laughs> it, well, um, it, it's just so pretty. So pretty. And, this is and the Katie has a wonderful eye like 
her inspo pictures of our up north country and like how she translates that in. She has one called wild rice. And if you mm -hmm. take a picture of the, the rice paddies and the rivers, like there, it's beautiful. She, um, she just translates color and inspo so well. So this little card was in there. And last month, if you watched, there was the Easter one um, in it. And I actually put that over there. I have a little pegboard and I loved it so much. Um, this is like, you know, vintage um, birthday card. It says back there was, or on the back of this was inspired. Um, I love vintage -y. I love this. Then that's how the Easter one was too. So totally up my alley. Um, very, very cute. And then little, um, so cute, the little, little bird. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's a pen. Oh, yours are different than mine. I have, my, I have a little ladybug pen. I didn't, mine. uh, this is no rain, no flowers. Yeah. I hadn't, this is, I haven't looked at it yet. So you guys are seeing it with me. <laughs> little birdie. And then the little... I love that bag. I got one too. My fabric is different, but they're those little pinch bags. Yeah. Oh, um, there's candy in there. Mm -hmm. I have candy hidden in little bags everywhere. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, and here, another one. So this is the other, I've had this um, subscription box for quite a while. So happy Jane. Um, I have not opened this yet. This is uh, last month's. Um, and so I don't even know wow. what's in here. Such restraint. Well, it came when I was in Arizona. Arizona. Okay. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold on to it and open it here with you guys. Sure. So I had already um, cut the tape. Oh, refresh. By the way, if you get this and you haven't looked at yours yet, look away. Look away. Um, I forget what movie is that. Song. Refresh. Look at the detail of like what she just showed, and like the sticker matches the card. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? Yeah. Like, but just her details are insane. Yep. I always try to save the little sticker. I just love these. Oh. So I, it smells wonderful. It does smell amazing. It's lavender. So this is a lavender citrus lanolin wool wash bar. Oh gosh, it smells so good. One of these, those towels. Hey, that matches my bag. Yeah. Let's check it out. Yeah, uh, wow. <laughs> totally. Tis the season. For, yep. For fresh. Oh, stop it. You guys. Mm -mm. every time yeah. and you should feel how soft this is are do you get the so i DK? get the dk mm. there's never been a box that, you that i didn't love i just I, she oh gosh. no words the lavender just the field the stems and then the lavender can you even I love it. Oh, it's. It smells like the. It's. The wool wash bar. Mm. I love it. So, yep, yeah, uh, that's it for community service acquisitions. All right. Well, let's do a, a quick recap then. So, um, Andrea Gray from Arkansas. If you, if that's you, reach out to us at our email. It'll be linked down below. Uh, we would love to get your shipping details and get this Heidi and Lana DK sock set it's out so to pretty. you. Yeah. So get a hold of us. Comment below. Tell us whatever you want to tell us. You don't have to use a word of any sort. Just um, let us know what you're working on. Um, you know what you enjoyed, what you connected with us on uh, during this episode, and we are giving away um, the hummingbird. Uh, May subscription set from mm -hmm. Katie at Hummingbird Yarns. Mm -hmm. We're also giving away two patterns. Uh, we'll gift them to you via Ravelry. 
Um, but two patterns from Nancy of Knit Sit Pappy for the Titty Gaga socks for the Canadian Breast Cancer Research. And then we'll give you, we're going to give away two patterns to, um, so we'll have five separate winners. So two patterns for the Pinky Swear socks for children who have cancer to provide both emotional and financial support to their families. Coming from Corey at IROC Knits. Her pattern goes live April 22nd. Look for it. Go get Nancy's. It released yesterday. And um, yeah, we want to hear from you in the comments below. We would love it. And and I mean, like our, and subscribe. Yes, our numbers. Um, so I think the first time, like, we weren't nervous because we thought five people were going to watch. And then there were <laughs> yeah. like over 11,000. And we were like, whoa. <laughs> and then the next episode released. And, um, you know, our numbers were very good. And that's why we're doing this. But if you're watching and you like it and you want more of it, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And um, yeah, and we also want to hear from all of you. So mm -hmm. comment below for those yes. giveaways and we'll see you in three weeks. Mm -hmm. Until then, make what makes you happy. Bye.